When it comes to the Borderlands games, the first thing you might think about is all the wacky guns you can find. But we can't forget about those scary looking rocks that make things go. So to mix things up this time around, today's question is, can you beat Borderlands 2 with only the fastball? All right, before we hop in, I'm gonna pitch the rules to you real quick. First off, uh, wait, did we really just put two baseball jokes in the intro? Nah, bro, we're cutting that one out. Anyway, this is gonna be an overpowered 10 UVHM playthrough. The skills Nuke and Scorched Earth are both banned because they would probably carry us too much, but we will be using turrets for slag since Gearbox decided a slag fastball was too fun to include in the game. No bar allowed, and we must have a fastball equipped at all times, meaning we are not allowed to use the stock grenade for boosted jumps in this run. With the rules out of the way, let's get to the build. Here's a full view so that the build critics can start their four page essay telling me why I should have spec'd for more gun damage. But the skills I think are important are do or die because I need to be able to throw grenades while down, and 11 in Grenadier to make sure I have the balls to beat this challenge. As for turret upgrades, I snag the shield, maglock, and extra turret skills for defensive help, and double up for the aforementioned slagging. Gear consists of a basic shield because I wanted to do it without a big boom blaster to really flex on them. Vault Hunter Relic because it has no combat utility and getting cool drops is fun. An expert grenadier so he can carry more nades. And of course, fastballs coming in explosive, fire, shock, and corrosive elements. All right, now let's hop into the run. Right off the bat, I noticed that my self-conscious masochism decided to start me off with a whopping zero grenades. I usually start myself with full ammo, but no cash to keep it balanced, but this time I just had to search for everything. All the enemies in this beginning bit are fleshy, so fire fastballs were the way to go. Dealing with the bully mongs was simple, because they're huge targets, but I started having a little trouble when the bandits came into play. Simple math can figure out barely any grenades and missing my shots, or throws I guess, equals a bad time. I had a few bandits left and opened every container in Lyersburg to find more grenades with no luck. I would have bought more, but the town didn't have power, and I was practically broke anyway. So with nothing we can do, I guess the run ends here. Psych, you really thought I was gonna give up here? Not a chance. We save quit so all the containers were full again, and this time around I actually made sure to not miss, and only hit enemies if they're perped up so my throws reached their maximum potential. We cleared out Liarsburg and started towards Boom Boom, but I realized I was going to need more than four grenades to take them out, so we decided to do some farming, which felt super weird for one of my challenge runs. Now's the perfect time to show off a strategy I will be using for a lot of this run. If Axon throws his second turret down and recalls the first one before it deploys, all of Axon's kill skills are activated, and since we're specced into Onslaught, we can use this strat to get a short movement speed boost. After snagging some guns to sell, we went back and made our first attempt at beating Boom Boom. I could also say it was my last attempt because Boom Boom honestly got bodied. Altogether with Slag, it only took 11 grenades, so not sure what to say except rip bozos. For the path up to Flint, I switched to my Shock Fastball because a lot of these guys had shields. This didn't change much though, they still took 1-3 to three grenades to kill, so no big deal yet. I jumped into Flint's arena for an epic fight, but turned out I was fighting Houdini because everyone just up and disappeared. Our first real attempt I used entirely for learning. I tested both shock and explosive fastballs to see which would deal more damage, and explosive was definitely the way to go. The difficulty rating for this fight is a solid 10 fastballs out of 21. Now I know what some of you guys are thinking. Wait, a gas mask challenge run and the first two fights weren't legally considered torture devices? What's going on here? And fair enough, it's been pretty easy so far, but I will say, this challenge had a lot of ups and downs, so don't call it a win yet. Anyway, after shotgunning an espresso shot, or performing an espresso shotgun if you will, it was time to get to Sanctuary. We had to save Reese first, and somehow got a triple kill with one grenade. Uh, okay, maybe it was a quadruple, because I think we murdered Reese too. Uh, it's fine though, we always avenge him anyway, so no bad karma on our end. We made it to Sanctuary and immediately had to leave because Lilith doesn't know how to just teleport to Sanctuary, I guess. It's fine, I like speedrunning through Frostburn Canyon anyway. Nothing along the path is mandatory to kill, but I do love breaking some ankles here and there. I wasn't worried about the mobbing at the end being too hard. I was mostly just worried about having enough ammo to deal with all the heathens. I made sure to switch back and forth from fire and corrosive grenades to really get my money's worth. That was when I noticed that constantly having to open my inventory to switch elements is a lot less fun than pressing a button to switch guns. 
Also, picking up weapons to sell is whack because they don't directly go into my backpack, so that's also obnoxious. On the bright side, time stops while you're in menu if you're in single player, so it's not like I was vulnerable. Vending machines are a different story though. The fight took two trips to the ammo vendor and one death. I would say I didn't suffer, but I also had to do this, so I'ma call it a net loss. Saving Roland was up next, and we needed a new car to pool those blood shots. Cars aren't really balanced for OP levels, so this part was also super easy. I mean, the first car practically delivered itself to me. We made our new car bubblegum flavored because that's what baseball players eat and casually drove ourselves to the Bloodshot Stronghold. Bad Ma was up to bat, but it didn't take long for me to strike him out along with his three little bench warmers. Some of you guys might still be thinking that this is way too easy, like only six deaths so far, come on. But it's gonna get tough soon, I promise. The Bloodshot Ramparts and I have a weird relationship. Like the mobbing here could be so fun at times, but then you get to the swirly bit and everything is just so tough. Everyone has the high ground on you, there are railings everywhere that enemies love to hide behind, and the frenzied marauders are all programmed to be cowards and run away as soon as you go down. I was super unlucky here because two of the goons had elemental weapons. Dot damage in UBHM done to the player is almost always fatal, but dot damage done by the player is a conspiracy theory because that shit doesn't exist. Also didn't have any friggin ammo, so I had to backtrack. Only had two goons left before the door was supposed to open, but on the bright side, I managed to run past Mad Mike with little inconvenience. I probably could have killed him easy because he's slow and a big target, but I needed to conserve what ammo I could. We found Roland right as his kidnapception was taking place. Warden snagged him and that was a big problem for us. I tried to play passive because I didn't want to waste my ammo, but my greed was getting me killed. Grenades or not, the game was rigged from the start. With 20 grenades to my name, I went in to fight Warden, and well... I kinda knew this fight was going to be bad because constructors have something like a 90% damage reduction to explosives, and it's not like we could have bought more grenades because the only ammo vendors at the beginning of the map. I really tried everything for this fight. I even checked all the chests around, but ended up with more pitchforks than grenades, so yay. With all hope lost, I faced the harsh truth. We were once again going to the dreaded gulag. I'ma play Psychic one more time and guess that some of you guys are wondering, how are you going to kill Warden when the fight at the gulag is harder? Worry not, I had a plan. So we head over to the frickin' Cromorax headhunter to farm this chest until we hit max cash and had an inventory full of guns that were all worth at least $3 million. 30 minutes of that mind-numbing activity later, we headed towards the gulag to make our first attempt against Warden. So first thing I did was find a good little spot where I could lob away. After I ran out of grenades, I'd go back to spawn and top off, then repeat this process over and over and over. This kinda sucked because if I was too slow, I'd have to waste six nades on a shield but at least he didn't have health regen or the run would have ended here. We also used a little strat that gave us some more survivability. If your second turret gets destroyed, you're able to place another one. So we would hide our first one somewhere safe so we could constantly have at least one bubble guarding us. With this strat, it took eight trips to the vendor, $150 million worth of fastballs, another shot of espresso, and get this, zero deaths to send Warden to the scrapyard in the sky. This did take a while though, especially if we include the necessary farming, so I give this fight a 160 fastballs out of 21. Yes, I counted. Roland and I dealt with the rest of the loaders together, but Warden decided to crush Roland with its dying breath and I couldn't turn the mission in. It's about time something cursed happened. This is a gas mask challenge one we're talking about. A quick save quit fixed it though and Roland was finally saved. Our next homies Mordo and Tina were going to help us blow up and rob a train, surprisingly in that order. No mobbing here, just collection objectives, so I was on the defensive for this part. I devised a strat where I would throw my two bubble shields down as cover and use them as bases to run to. Which is perfect, because I've never actually made it past second base. What? Why? Why are you guys laughing at me? Come on guys, I only ever played baseball once, leave me alone. With the train derailed, we made our way to fight Wilhelm. So here I am, right? Preparing for my second tough fight in a row, my courage kicks in and I run in there. But like, homie just gets styled on. Get nay nay. I literally just stood there pressing one button. Like, you see this confusion in my eyes? It was so easy that I had to double check that I was still on OP10. Tell me, 
Who would you rather fight? Wilhelm, the ultimate killing cyborg, or a blue f***ing toaster? Wilhelm fight, 12 fast balls out of 21. So anyway, Sanctuary got bamboozled, so our home plate was thousands of feet in the air, which makes it kind of hard to slide into if you ask me. Next we had to run through the fridge, which, here's a clip to sum that up. Milk it. Milk it. Running through the owl wash didn't seem bad at the time until I realized I forgot to hit the fast travel objective. Here's a pro tip. If you don't see a constructor spawn here, you forgot to hit the fast travel. Welcome to the bozo gang. Mr. Noodle's health bar honestly intimidated the heck out of me, so I noped myself out of there until the loaders came to help. Not only did he have a tanky health bar, but homie also got telekinesis from that beacon he ate. Anyway, I needed to play extra careful here because I was using a fire fastball to take him out, but all my potential revives were armored, so going down likely meant death. I played patiently until he was distracted, got him perped up, and took him out. With the beacon back in our possession, it was time to head to Overlook and set it up. The first few waves of gun loaders were going well. Slag and corrosive fastballs can easily take him out, so I just had to make sure I kept my stock up with the ammo vendor. Everything started falling apart though when this happened. Oh my god! Oh my god! You have to repair the beacon. Okay, holy fudge! I kinda held it together after that, at least up until another constructor popped up. Some speedy dodging and a whole lot of turret diversion is what got me through this fight. At one point I tried to hide from a nuke inside of my bubble and barely survived. I sold all of my leftovers from the chest farm and just barely had enough to kill the constructor, and the rest of the bots used up the rest of the ammo I could find in town. So that was a pretty close call. Finally at Sanctuary, we reunited with our homies and devised our next plan. I, however, didn't listen to the plan at all because I ended up going to Brick's place instead of the preserve. Maybe that's just my subconscious trying to drown this heck all out of my brain. I'm not sure. The loader wounding bit wasn't bad, but we had some close calls. The mobbing sections were all right, just obnoxious because I had to switch between shock and corrosive a lot for loaders and stalker kills, but the ultimate loader pretty much got deleted at the end. And so did all the loot homies, but they were kind of lame with no drops. The final bit of mobbing had me super spooked when I seen a pup skag hitting Mach 20 because of their shock power up. Honestly though, it didn't matter much. Pretty sure physics says that running full speed into my fastball just guarantees their death anyway. At this point, I was pretty much to Bloodwing, but I had no grenades to my name. Any I found were used to clear out the goons in my way, so I decided to run back to the nearest vendor and just top off there. We then bubble hopped our way back and started the Bloodwing fight. We killed one bird with nine stones. And ironically enough, that means we were efficient. This fight is so weird, because you either body Bloodwing because your damage is so overpowering, or you get decimated because you didn't kill her fast enough and her attacks are friggin' undodgeable. Anyway, the bird is bodied, which means our rivalry score was 3-2. Wait, am I in the lead? Okay, maybe this challenge is too easy. Nah, just kidding, in like two minutes from now, I'm straight up hopeless. Anyway, Mordecai must have been really angry this time around because he straight up deleted a tubby stalker in his rage sniping montage. At least I'm pretty sure that's what happened. I didn't get to see it, I just found the corpse and loot. Brick was the next homie to recruit and he is usually the easiest. I apparently found muscles on the way, which was cool, but I didn't even realize who I was murdering until chat pointed it out. Rip my homie muscles, gone, but never noticed. Anyway, Brick's initiation went something like this. We put balls in the Goliath's faces until they got angry, watched them take out all their anger on all the wrong people, ate a donut in the corner while they coached a Little League game, swept in last second to take credit for everything, and trickshotted the sarcastic slab. Fighting loaders with Brick was tough at first because I already grabbed all the balls in this map, so I decided to just help Brick punch the loaders by holding them in place and slapping them with my spaghetti noodle melee damage until they dropped some more. Speaking of slapping, it would be cool if you popped on a roid shield and annihilated that subscribe button. Only about 9% of my viewers are actually subbed, so if you're a returning viewer, might as well sub since you enjoy the content anyway. Not only does this make me feel good, but it also helps me get these videos out more often. Anyway, other than the ammo being scarce, it was pretty easy considering the bots had three distractions before they targeted me, so let's move on to our next subject. Oh crap, we're already done. 
Oh, brother. Okay, guys. I promise this is where the easy streak ends. It's all pain from here on out. You have my word. Up next was our climb to bunker, and to prepare, we did another run of chest farming. This time around, we found a matching grip stalker and a longbow. Not sure if that word can get me demonetized right now. Grenade mod. So that was pretty neat. So there are three doors preventing us from getting to the top of bunker. The first door is guarded by this constructor. This one wasn't too bad since I was able to use my patent pending strat of tricking it to look at a wall so the missiles don't hit me. Had this little hiccup, other than that, this door was doable. Door two, however, was where our hearts were broken. Longtime viewers know about these little devils known as the baby turrets. What makes these turrets so bad, you ask? Well, this. <laughs> These turrets are completely immune to blast damage due to a glitch, meaning our fastball will never be able to damage them. And since they're mandatory to kill, that means you cannot be borderland. Wait, 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 hold up, hold up. Are we really gonna count that as a loss because of a glitch? In my eyes, this is just a straight up oversight on Gearbox's end, so let's keep going. We could kill the turrets with our turrets if they wanna be like that. After that, nothing will be able to stop. Huh. Even if we consider the baby turrets as an invalid run ender due to a glitch, there's no way around justifying this thing. 21 fastballs barely scuffed the pain on them. I tried opening ammo crits to find more, but even with a godly amount of grenade RNG, I don't think it would be possible. Maybe if we had access to the whole map's worth of grenades, but the thing despawns if you get too far away and its health resets. And I wouldn't call that a glitch, but just an intended mechanic to reduce lag. The only way I could think to do this would be having a co-op partner holding it in place while you run back and forth buying ammo. So no, you can't beat Borderlands 2 with only the fastball. Because constructor blast resistance, lack of ammo, and despawn mechanics, and also those stupid baby turrets. On the bright side, Mama ain't raised no quitter, so we're going to see the rest of this challenge out by doing a cheesy turret kill on the constructor, and I'll make it up to you later in the run. Just you wait. Quick note before we get to Bunker, I actually had to climb this hill twice and kill all the door guards twice because they all reclosed. Apparently you can open the first and second doors and save quit and they'll stay open, but if you open the third and save quit, they'll all close again, so just watch out for that if you're playing. Anyway, we refarmed some money for the Bunker fight while also finding another Fastball and Legendary Soldier class mod, so that was cool. Also got a bunny launcher from a loot homie while we were trying to snipe face McShooty. I guess now's probably a good time to say I'll have this save file with all the cool drops in the bank in the description if anyone wants to try this challenge out or snag some free loot. Hitting face McShooty seemed pretty unlikely because the grenades just kinda... Even if they did reach him though, they can't crit so the fastball disappoints us one more time. Finally at the bunker, we started dealing with the big turrets who aren't lame and blast immune. The bunker spawned in and to play it safe, I farmed these ammo crates here for a bit which was probably a bit overkill since I had enough money to just buy the 33 grenades I needed to destroy it. Also, it's just really wacky how the greatest defense bot ever built took a fraction of what Warden took to kill. Angel Core was up next, and luckily we had a siren and a trained soldier helping us. Roland was there providing cover fire and health regen, and Angel was providing us with plenty of grenades to take out bots with. Oh yeah, Lil showed up too, but she just straight up ruined my day. Oh, she said the thing, bro, when I trick shot it. Oh my god. You fing ruined my trick shot, Lilith. Besides that bit, this place didn't go bad. The baby turrets here aren't as glitchy as the ones outside. And everything was armored, so there was no need for switching grenades constantly. Jack ended up killing Roland, which sucked, but also got Lilith to shut up, which was cool. So I'd say that was pretty chaotic neutral of him to do. Up next was Sawtooth Cauldron, which instantly became cursed the second I arrived. Moments after that, we were hiding for our lives as the ambush commanders waddled themselves ever closer and closer. Luckily, our turrets were ready just in time, so we managed to escape that fate for a far more toasty one. Our new purpose was now buzzard busting. We barely managed to destroy Boombringer with our last nade in breath. If a buzzard with no pilot was hard for us, five of them with pilot should be a piece of cake, right? Yes, actually. I don't know why, but it just worked. We speed ran through the boneyard and experienced what it truly meant to be a fastball, so that was pretty fun. But the Badlands was quite the opposite. 
Y'all remember that ultimate constructor I couldn't kill without using my turret? Well, I kind of feel bad for being such a filthy casual that I decided a new rule to beating this run was also to put Saturn out of commission. So instead of going to the Badlands, we farmed up some more money to fund our mission. Funny drops this time around included a WTF shield, homing quasar, and an 81 champ. The plan for Saturn was simple. Lob balls until we ran out, buy more, repeat. We just had to make sure his little drone strikes didn't sneak up on us. With the strat we had, it took 14 trips to the vendor, 200 million dollars, and way too much time farming. I rate this fight 201 fastballs out of 21. We made one last farming run and got a legendary berserker class mod, so we threw it in the bank with the rest of the goodies I decided to hoard even though I can't use them. The claptrap door and all of Hero's past weren't too exciting, so I'll spare the details there, but finally at the vault, we face our next real challenge. Handsome Jack was watching me the whole time. He knew my fighting style, so he used his endless supply of riches to pay Gearbox off in exchange for constructor level grenade resistance. Getting through his shield alone takes more than half of my supply of grenades, and since the homie has some crazy health regen, there was no way we were going to keep up. We needed a plan, and we needed a plan fast. I knew that if we had a chance at taking Jack out, we would need him slagged, stationary, and have full ammo ready to go. Slagging Jack is super hard for some reason, so that part was luck based. And having full nades for his health bar was going to be tough, especially because he would spawn a shield drone that just took up a lot of our resources. So with this knowledge, I devised a game winning plan. Step one was to get rid of a shield. Step two was to use a little RNG manipulation. If you are below one third of your maximum ammo for any ammo type, ammo crates are more likely to give you that type of ammo. We used this strat until we were full again. Step three was to get Jack backed into a wall. This part was a waiting game, but he eventually fell into our trap. Step four, make a sandwich. What? No, not literally. I mean like wedge him between two turrets and just pray for slag. Step five, start chucking. 18 fastballs into a purple Jack and he was finished. The turrets probably did a good chunk of the damage and they also got the kill shot, but I don't care. I'm taking that dub. The warrior was the last thing in our way of victory. Early testing showed that the shock fastball was doing the most damage. Not sure why exactly, but I didn't mind. Our game plan was to run from base to base, snagging ammo and keeping cover. Also making sure to keep ammo between seven and three when possible. Below seven so that more grenades would spawn and above three so that we could get second wins in emergency situations. With this strat, the first attempt wasn't even close. The second attempt was so freaking close, but you know what they say third time is the charm, meaning you can beat most of Borderlands 2 with only the fast fall. Thank you guys so much for watching up to this point. Before you go, I would like to say that liking, commenting, and subscribing all help me out a ton. Not only do the nice words drive me to keep doing these runs and making these videos, but it also helps with YouTube's algorithm, which helps me grow. And if you want to support me directly, I just rolled out channel memberships. 99 cents get you emotes, member badges, and videos a day early. I tried to make it cheap since I don't post too often yet, but the support could help get videos out earlier for everyone. You can also come hang out with me on Twitch or in Discord if you want. I'll have links to those in the description. And last but not least, thank you to It's Naraka for the absolutely awesome thumbnail art. I'll put links to their socials in the pinned comment. But until next time, breathe easy homies.